We're going to talk today about amendments 4, 5, 6, and 8. Uh, these are called the uh, due process amendments. If you remember, though, we've been talking about amendments 1 and 2. We spent a lot of time on the First Amendment, which includes five rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, freedom of petition, and freedom of assembly. Second Amendment involves your right to bear arms. We talked about the constitutionality of owning a gun and how now the courts have ruled that you have an individual right to own a gun. But today we're going to talk about Amendments 4, 5, 6, and 8 specifically. Uh, the Fourth Amendment protects the government, uh, or actually protects individuals from the government, against unreasonable searches and seizures and arrests. Um, if you remember, the first ten amendments are called the Bill of Rights. They're protecting you, the individual, from the government. The Fourth Amendment deals with your um, protection from unreasonable searches by the government, uh, whether it's a search of your home, search of uh, your car, of your person, you individually, backpacks, for example, or things that you may have in your pockets. The search is when the government is basically looking for something. That's the search. Seizing or seizure is taking control of the, the object or the thing. Uh, to seize means to take. So if they seize a piece of evidence, they are taking it. Fourth Amendment uh, really comes down to searches that are allowed and, and not allowed. Those that are allowed usually have a warrant, and warrants come from a judge. A judge must sign off on a warrant for the police to do a search of your car uh, or your home, um, for example. We're, we're going to talk more specifically about searches in cars in class, um, but warrants, I should say, are probably used more for um, homes than anything else. In that warrant, in that document, it's going to describe what the police are looking for, um, what they expect to to find, um, and, and where they're going to do a search. Now, to do a search like that, to get a warrant, the police need to have probable cause. Um, this is a reasonable belief that a person has committed a crime. We're also going to talk about searches in schools later on, Probable cause is not used by schools. Uh, reasonable suspicion is used by schools. And we'll talk about the difference of those two, but probable cause is a higher standard than reasonable suspicion. Um, we'll talk in class about searches of lockers, of bags, of iPads, uh, for example. Um, but probable cause is, is a higher threshold than reasonable suspicion. One important vocab word that you need to remember is the exclusionary rule. Um, this is a rule that if the police happen to do an illegal search of a car, of a home, and they find evidence that makes you look guilty, that evidence cannot be used in court. So again, any illegally obtained evidence cannot be used in court against you. Uh, the second bullet point here deals with searches without a warrant. We'll talk about that more in class, but there are actually quite a few examples of when police can do searches without a warrant. If you're a big fan of the show Cops, uh, you will notice that there are times when the police cannot get a warrant. Um, just as an example, if you, uh, a suspect is running down the road and running away from the police, the police don't have, a, have time to get a warrant. Um, they have to chase the bad guy and, and can do a search of, of him and wherever he is arrested by, uh, just for example. So we'll talk about that more in class, but there are examples when the police do not need a warrant. Moving on to the Fifth Amendment, uh, there are a few things in the Fifth Amendment. One says that you cannot, or, um, you cannot be forced to testify against yourself in court. If you are on trial for a crime, whether it's murder or robbery, you do not have to take the witness stand. You may take the witness stand if you want to, but you are not required to take the witness stand. And the thinking here is that if you were forced to take the witness stand, 
and you said something that made yourself look guilty, obviously you could go to jail and get in big trouble for that. If, if you want to take the witness stand and clear the air and clear your name, you have that right to do so. If you don't want to testify, that is your right. Also in the Fifth Amendment, it talks about your right to a grand jury. We talked a little bit about a grand jury earlier in class. That was one of your vocab words. Grand juries are usually only used in federal cases and for serious crimes. Remember, a grand jury does not determine guilt or innocence. A grand jury only decides if there's enough evidence for someone to face trial. So the grand jury will look at evidence against someone. If they think someone should, should go to trial, that will be their ruling. If they decide there is not enough evidence, uh, they will not indict a person. Uh, a grand jury returns something called an indictment, which sends someone to trial. Fifth Amendment also talks about double jeopardy. Um, this is not the second round of Jeopardy on TV, the more serious, difficult questions. No, double Jeopardy means you cannot be tried twice for the same crime. If you are found not guilty the first time, you do not have to face trial again on that charge. Sixth Amendment also includes a few things. Uh, one includes your right to a lawyer. You have the right to a lawyer. Now, in the past, this meant that you could hire one if you wanted to. But there's, there was a famous Supreme Court case in the 1960s called Gideon versus Wainwright. And Mr. Gideon was a poor man in the state of Florida who uh, was arrested, tried, and convicted for theft, pretty much stealing a small amount of money. But at trial, Mr. Gideon uh, said he could not afford an attorney and wanted the court to appoint one to represent him. And the judge at the trial in Florida said no, the Constitution does not require the government to give an attorney to everyone. Well, Mr. Gideon um, appealed and took his case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court did rule unanimously, 9-0, to zero, that every defendant has the right to a lawyer in criminal court. So um, that is why you hear today in the Miranda rights, uh, the Miranda rights are when someone is, is arrested right away, they say, um, you have the right to remain silent. They go through all that, but then they also say, you have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you. So the, the thing to understand about this case is that poor people now can have an attorney provided to them by the government if they cannot afford one. Eighth Amendment deals with cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, it forbids excessive bail and fines. Uh, remember, bail is the money that is used uh, to basically uh, keep you coming back to court. You post bail, maybe $1,000, and uh, it, it keeps you coming to your court appearances. If you skip town, that money is gone. You forfeit that money. Um, bail is higher for more serious crimes. The more serious the crime, the higher the bail amount would be. A judge can even um, revoke bail, not give you bail even. Um, that is the judge's right. Now, notice um, it says right here, if I get my handy drawing tool, it says that the punishment must be cruel and unusual. It doesn't say cruel or unusual. It says cruel and unusual punishment. Well, the Eighth Amendment involves the death penalty. And there are many people out there who believe that the, the death penalty is cruel and unusual punishment. Now, in the past, in the 1700s, this amendment would protect people from being whipped or branded. And the question today is more, is the death penalty cruel and unusual punishment? Well, the Supreme Court has ruled that the death penalty is constitutional, um, that can be offered as a punishment. Here are states that currently have the death penalty. You can see states in green 
do not have the death penalty. And you'll notice right there, Michigan, we do not have the death penalty in the state of Michigan. Now, it says also at the top here that this is for states, state death penalty. Uh, this is if you break a state law. Now, usually, the death penalty is only applied for the most serious cases, usually first-degree murder. First-degree murder is when you obviously murder someone, but you plan it out in advance. Um, it's not a crime of, of passion done in the heat of the moment. First-degree murder is when you plan it out and then you carry out that act. These are state laws. The United States federal government does have the death penalty. If you are charged with federal murder, you could face the death penalty in Michigan. But most people uh, in Michigan who commit murder are charged under the state of Michigan law, and therefore they cannot face the death penalty. They would face a maximum of life in prison without parole. So you see there are a few states that do not have the death penalty in our country. This slide shows you um, states that do have the death penalty, but then the number of executions. And notice Texas has far more executions than other states. Um, Texas has applied the death penalty more than any other state in recent years. Um, you see those states in green that don't have the death penalty. Obviously, they have not put any people to death, but Texas has quite a few executions. Virginia as well, 89, that's quite a few. Uh, Florida uses the death penalty as well um, and has applied that regularly. Um, but this is just meant to show you that, that Texas has the most executions by far of most of the other states. Last slide to show you, uh, this just shows you the death penalty worldwide. Now this slide is a, a little old, the information on here. But you can see countries in white do not have the death penalty at all. And notice in Europe you see a lot of countries that don't have the death penalty. You see Spain in there, France, Great Britain, uh, Germany. Notice Canada does not have the death penalty. Australia does not have the death penalty. A few countries here in Southern Africa don't have the death penalty. Um, so there are some countries around the world that don't have the death penalty. It's kind of interesting though, if you look at these statistics on the side, most executions in 2003 took place in China, Iran, the United States, and Vietnam. Um, says a little further down, March 2004, it was estimated that China executes nearly 10,000 people each year. And more executions were in Iran. Some executions were in Vietnam. So there are some countries that don't have the death penalty. Um, China has quite a few death uh, penalty cases. Um, but this is just a little overview of the due process amendments. Make sure if you have questions, you let me know. Uh, shoot me an email or talk to me before or after class. We will go over this a little bit in class. Thank you.